Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to airbrush this really basic skull with horns using a template by Airshot Stencils. It's really easy to do. It's a perfect tutorial for any beginner wanting to do some skull artwork. Let's get into the video right now. So I've base coated the canvas in a graphite gray and using the template, I'm gonna start with the negative section. We're gonna paint a flesh tone color on there first. So what I wanna do is just spray the back with some spray adhesive and then just check to make sure that the spray adhesive is gone tacky and position the template. Once you're satisfied with the position, just press it down and it should have enough tack to just sit into place. Obviously with canvas, cause it's textured, it um, has a little bit more trouble sticking. So we wanna protect the surface around the artwork from overspray using these paper masks. And all I've done is stuck a bit of masking tape on a regular bit of copy paper. You can see it's half stuck on, so it's leaving a bit of that sticky side, which we can put into place. And now we are ready to spray the first color, which is gonna be flesh tone. I'm just going to lightly build up my layers. Couple more coats just to get some full coverage. Okay, and now that the flesh tone is dry, it's gonna remove all the masking. Hold on to these. So just stick them on a, a bench that you've got or somewhere where you can peel them back off and reuse them. So they come in handy. What I wanna do now is carefully peel the template off. You can see it's pretty sharp. So now I've got the base in, happy with that. That's uh, dry. I'm gonna line the template back up and we are gonna spray in those teeth. So you can see through the template well enough to position it. You can see the bottom teeth are lined up pretty well, but the top ones have got a little bit of a gap. If I do get a bit of a gap, it's not the end of the world. I can fix that. But if I can avoid it now, I will. Okay, I'm just gonna go with it like this. And if I've got to tweak anything, it'll be a good little lesson for you on how to do so. Now I'm just gonna lift this onto the edge of the easel so that I've got a bit of a flat area for the stencil to sit on the canvas. And I'm gonna grab the sheets again from before. Just mask around our artwork. So I'm gonna use the template a lot more in this video because I want this to be a bit more of an instructional video for the complete beginner so that you can virtually you know grab a set of templates like this or anything similar and then um, you know get a pretty awesome looking skull with uh, with these so now i'm going to focus that flesh tone bone color just on the teeth now if you want to learn how to mix up this color i've got a video showing you how to do exactly that. I will link that video in the description below, as well as some other handy videos for you to check out. So I'll have some more advanced skull tutorials linked up in the description as well, just in case this one's a bit easy for you and you wanna move on to something a little bit more difficult. So I've got a nice tone of flesh tone on those teeth. Now I'm gonna use sepia brown. And what I wanna do first is I wanna aim for the top of these eyes. And I'm gonna go slightly darker. So I've come down sort of halfway, I'm gonna continue feathering it down, but not as heavy. Just let the overspray do the job and darken off the top. Let's bring the sepia down about halfway or just over. And I'm gonna do the same sort of thing with the uh, nose. Overspray is going to pick up on these other areas, that's fine. So we need a bit of sepia on there anyway. So it might take a couple of coats depending on what brand of paint you're using. And then spray these in a little bit heavier. I want these to be sprayed in, so I'm going to go over these. So really utilizing the template a lot more than I normally would.
but this is more like I would show beginner students if they were attending my class and they wanted to do an artwork like this I would run them through it in this manner so it just makes it a little bit easier to get a effective end result and then as your skill improves you can do more and more of it freehand just experiment Okay, so now I'm going to add a bit of shading to the teeth. I'm going to hit that lower edge. So you can even just aim sort of where my finger is and you'll find that that way the overspray will just hit that lower edge. Okay, you can see I'm not aiming right for where I want it because I'm allowing the overspray to do the rest of the work. And then we'll do a similar sort of thing for the top teeth. Not as heavy and we'll just darken off some of these tips pick a side and then switch I'm switching to the other side so that our shadow is effectively coming straight on sort of above but we're going to get that curve in there while we've got the template on there we're going to do the same the lower teeth get a bit of detail in there and we'll shade a little bit on the top to pick up this edge and now I'm going to imagine that these horns are 3D so I'm going to darken off along here a little bit and under here while I've got the sepia and darken off at the lower part of here and here And we'll darken off a little bit more under here. So you can see I initially put some detail in, didn't go as dark. Now I'm sort of working in a bit more detail. So now let's remove that and take a look, see where we're at. So you can see you got a pretty cool looking uh, horned skull there. Now I'm going to continue with the sepia and just add in a few details here and there. I'll try not to get too complex with it. I'll just feather out some of these. So even if you've got stencil lines, if you come back over the top of it, then you'll feather it out. Now I understand if you are a complete beginner, this part might be a bit difficult to do. So if that's the case, just um, try your best to implement some of these details. However, if you're still struggling, you could use a paintbrush just to get some of those fine lines in there. Alternatively, you would want to line the template back up again. But definitely don't get disheartened. It, it just takes practice, especially just the freehand airbrushing. Make sure you, you practice your double action. So always press down for air and pull back for paint. Don't do this, you know, don't, don't sort of paint like that. Keep the air pressed down at all times and just pull back as you need it and move with your stroke. A lot of people also ask why always skulls? Well, they are very popular, that's number one. But um, number two, they're very forgiving to paint. If you make a mistake, you can turn it into something. You, you know, just keep going with your artwork and, you know, let's say you do a blowout anywhere on this artwork. If you can't totally hide it, turn it into a crack or a hole within the bone. So don't think, oh no, I've made a mistake and I'm going to have to start all over again. Just keep working at it. Sometimes those mistakes can actually benefit you and make the artwork look better and you, you know, you wouldn't have added that particular section in if you hadn't made that mistake, so.
Okay, we are getting there. I am dusting a little bit on the top as well. Because I find the highlight will sit nicely on there. I'll work on the other horn. Just replicating the other side. Doesn't have to be exact, but you can use the other side that you've already rendered as a guide. So if this is the first time watching one of our videos, then welcome for all of our regular viewers, welcome back. I do hope that you're enjoying this video tutorial so far. If you are, give it a thumbs up, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing, tap on that bell icon, and that will notify you every time I put out new content. So just adding a little bit of texturing in. So in order to do that, just up close and just stipple with the brush. If you wanna add a crack up close and just move, once you've found the amount of paint that you're happy with. I don't want to go overboard with this one. Like I said earlier, I really want this to be more designed for the beginner in mind. So again, this part here, which I'm now doing a lot of it freehand, may be a bit too difficult if you have only just picked up the airbrush but don't get disheartened follow along if you can if not grab the template and use that to assist you you can see by doing that graduated tone you're getting a lot more depth in the eye sockets so that's one of the most common mistakes that I think a lot of people make when they're using templates they're just using them too much and just spraying a solid tone especially with skulls, spraying the eye sockets and the nose socket, just a flat black even, which is just way too, too dark and too flat. We will be using a black, but I'm gonna use a transparent black. So essentially that's just a, uh, a tone mixed up of transparent base with some drops of black if your paint has more of a transparent property to it then you may not need to add a transparent base to it a lot of people ask can i just add more reducer you can but if you over reduce your paint too much then it will start to spider because effectively what transparent base is is just a colorless binder So you can mix that up to your normal ratio and then add whatever color you wish. And it's gonna make that particular color more transparent. Whereas again, like I said, reducer is just reducer in order to thin your paint. So I've left that little bit of grey gap. I'll get rid of that with the uh, transparent black. That'll blend in well enough. But you could, if you're worried about it, you could just freehand over the top with the flesh tone or line up the template yet again. And get it in that way. Okay, so now onto the lower jaw. Bit of a drop shadow. So darken this section off. We've got our little line from the template. We'll blend that in so it disappears. Doesn't look completely masked. Again, another drop shadow, a few little bits of texture and damage to the bone. Shadow underneath those teeth. shade on the base now keep in mind 
If you're struggling to contain your overspray, it comes with positive masks. So you've got that part for the skull and this part for the jaw. So you could always lay that down and clean up your edges. Obviously the teeth are gonna be an issue because it doesn't come with one for the teeth, but you could always mask it if you really wanted to. Just try your best to keep the teeth clean. At least you've got those other positive masks to go back to if you need to clean up your edges. And in this case here with the gray, so I would then go back to my original gray and that will eliminate any overspray I may have, just like I've got a bit of sepia on there at the moment. Dust in these two areas just to darken those off and give it a bit more curve. And pretty happy with that so far. So now we're going to switch to white, add in a couple of highlights and then hit our transparent black. Okay, so now we've got white in the airbrush. I'm gonna come in now and add in my white highlights. Now, if this is the first time watching one of my videos, you may not know, but I usually add my highlights in second last, not last. Reason being is you can then clean up your white overspray with the next tone, which will be the transparent black. Whereas if you did the white last, then there's a good chance you may get some sort of overspray on it. And also white over a black or a darker tone will create a blue shift. And yeah, that's a good way to avoid that as well. And with white, I usually run it really thin to avoid the tip drying. I'd much rather just coat over the surface a few more times. Just hitting those edges of the bone wherever I want that bright white highlight. Again, if you are a beginner and you're struggling to do this, you could grab a paintbrush. With the Trident paint, you can definitely use a paintbrush and just brush it on. It works really well. Um, depending on what brand of paint you're using, you'd want to test that first. But for all of the Trident users, you can definitely use a paintbrush to apply Trident paint. And it flows beautifully. So you can see even with just adding a few highlights, how much that adds depth to the artwork. A few white highlights on the horns. Highlighting the teeth. With the teeth I like to just hit a real bright white highlight almost like a dot highlight and then feather it down a little bit like a mini dagger stroke. But you can see um, by even just hitting it like a dot white highlight, it'll um, give that tooth a more of a bone appearance. And now I'm working from the bottom up to add to those highlights with that little tiny stroke. But you don't need to coat the whole tooth. You also don't want to go too bright with the teeth because we don't want them to look like he's, this skull's visited the dentist recently, so you want it to be a little more dirty looking. The same procedure I did on the lower teeth. Let's come back in and brighten some of the areas up, but Pretty much just did some highlights and then some highlights underneath as well, which need a second coat, so I'll show you how I did those. So you could just leave it like that, but in my opinion, the transparent black's gonna give it a little bit more depth. I also wanna add something extra to it. Because I've set the canvas up in a portrait fashion, so vertical, I wanna run something up 
the canvas a little bit just to add a little bit of something to the uh, artwork and I'm going to do some smoke flame. So I'm going to do that with white. Okay, so starting at the top, using that template. So these are my fire tool templates. And I'll run some fire over the horns as well. So be sure to integrate it into your artwork. You can see it's moving in and out. So that helps to create the illusion of depth. And don't worry too much if there's something that you're not happy with, you can always eliminate it with the gray. I'm just hitting one of the edges and then feathering out from there. Have some coming out of the eye. Probably have to go back over it a little bit with the white, but that's all right. We'll come back to that. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far with that uh, smoke fire. I'm going to tone it down a little bit, I think, the smoke flame. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute, but it's definitely already given it some more depth. Okay, so just using the graphite grey, I'm going to come in and eliminate a little bit of the smoke flame in spots. Just got a little bit busy. So we'll kill that off with essentially our eraser. It's the beauty of uh, being able to come back in with your existing base color and know that it'll just opaque over the top, no problem. You can see I feathered around a little bit more just to blend it out. And now I'm going to just come in quickly and just re-highlight some of these. By going over it, it'll make it pop again. And it'll look like you've never adjusted it. Obviously, if you don't have a base color that you can do this on, then you need to be a lot more careful when doing your smoke flame so that you don't have to do this step you want to get it accurate to start with fix up the flame within the teeth you don't need much okay now just coming with the transparent black to add the final details now keep in mind you've got that smoke flame there so integrate your shading within that so you can see I've sort of just blended the shadow into that part of the smoke flame so it looks like it's moving in that direction. Now the key with the shading is you don't want to go over everything, only the deepest and darkest areas because you want that graduated tone from the transparent black leading into the sepia. And essentially this is just to add some final details and sharpen up your artwork and obviously give it more shape and depth. So you want to work up nice and close to get that real sharp edge. A little bit further away with your shading but still controlled. And again like I mentioned earlier if you struggle doing it completely freehand just grab your template 
you know you could utilize you know this part of the template for the eye sockets and the nostril and really get that sharp defined edge if you wish i just prefer the look of having it freehand after using a template so that it doesn't look too masked Again, just dusting a bit of that transparent black over the sections of the teeth there and the jawline to make that look like it's disappearing within the background and giving the artwork more depth. So if your shadows uh, become a little bit more patchy, then you can run with that because that'll actually create a little bit more texture. Just a closer look at the completed artwork, the skull with the horns buried within the smoke flame. Super easy to do. those smoke flames trailing up. So to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.